afternoon and welcome back to North of the Broad. I'm joined this afternoon by Stephen Murray, one of our new city councilmen here in Buford. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Um, so we're sitting here downtown, right on Carteret Street, sort of in the heart of things. Um, and you're brand new to the city council. Yeah, I um, was elected in, in November and uh, sworn in December 9th. So about a, about a month on the job mm -hmm. now. I'm um, very, very excited to uh, represent all of the city of Beaufort and excited to be here with you today in Low Country Produce, which is one yeah. of my favorite places. It is one of my favorite places and we're lucky to be able to have this great venue. Um, so as I see the traffic going by, I can see right over your right shoulder, you know, one of these parking meters that's here. <laughs> um, and so one of the things we're going to talk about that's on the list is what's going on with parking downtown Beaufort? Because I know, believe it or not, that's a hot button item. Par parking, parking is a big issue. Um, and I, I always start the parking conversation by saying, you know, having a parking problem downtown is a, is a good problem to have to deal with. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of cities nationwide um, that would love to have a parking issue like, like okay. we do. Right. Uh, but, in, but in all seriousness, we, uh, we have a parking management company that uh, we would contracted with for the past five years, mm -hmm. Linear Services. Yes. Uh, their contract expired back in September. Um, and the city has a policy, which I think is a, a prudent policy to have, that uh, we, we don't have contracts longer than five years. It's a good idea. Um, and so we reevaluate. We put out an RFP mm -hmm. um, to see if we can uh, provide those services more efficiently and with more value. Um, so we did that uh, September of October before I was uh, elected. Um, and a new parking vendor uh, was awarded the contract. So that's SP Plus. Okay. Um, and they will start February 1, and they will transition from Lanier, and so you'll It'll still be Park Beaufort. Um, you know, you shouldn't see a huge difference uh, in parking management. Uh, and also this council, I think, sort of as a Christmas present on December 23rd at yeah. our meeting, uh, we extended the two hours of free holiday parking all the way through June 30th. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. I think that made people um, pleasantly surprised. Um, so then what happens when the new parking management comes in? After that, um, that holiday gift expires, so to speak, we go back to um, how things were before as far as the paid parking? We're not sure. We're not sure. Um, two, two things are what we're, what we're hoping is going to happen. Uh, SP Plus um, is our new parking vendor. Uh, they are a nationwide parking contractor. They have lots of experience and lots of resources. Uh, in helping us with our parking management system. So the hope is they'll have a few months on the ground and can maybe advise us on exactly. things that we can do a little differently, do better mm -hmm. uh, in parking management. And then city council is also going to form a blue ribbon parking task force uh, with constituents and area stakeholders um, to look at the, the, the comprehensive uh, parking issues and retail issues in, in the downtown corridor, which, which may encompass a, a parking garage, flat lot parking, employee parking. Right. There are lots of um, different options when it comes to parking and, and Buford's typically been just used to what you see with the on-street parking with very little right. or limited parking lots. Absolutely, yep. and that's, that's what it comes down to. We have, we have a, a greater demand for parking than what we have a supply of. And I think what council found is that when we started this parking discussion, um, it raised more questions than, than answers. Um, so we feel like we really need to do a lot of data collection mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully within the next four to five months before the J June 30th deadline, um, we'll, we'll uh, look at all that data and then be able to make some sound decisions moving forward. Great, so definitely doing your due diligence around parking um, and certainly some of the new development that's going to take place or redevelopment here in Buford will impact that. So let's talk a little bit about that and what's going on along Boundary, Boundary Street and some redevelopment projects that you may want to be able to share some updates um, with the um, fine citizens here. Yeah, absolutely. So Boundary Street is a, is a major project, a little over $26 million. Um, it's a project that has been in the works almost 10 years now. Um, long. So it takes takes a while to get, <laughs> you know, as a small business owner. We have owner, to remember we live in the South and things, we take our, we take right. our time. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you, when you throw the governor, government in there, um, it, it takes a little bit longer. But the good news is the money is in the bank. Um, and I think, you know, consensus is when you drive into Buford and you look at our entryway, it is, it is not uh, respective of what our town looks like. You know, not until you get around Bellamy's Curve, mm -hmm. really, do you, do you really appreciate the, the, the beauty the and the history. The beauty and the um, history. And the natural beauty of, of where we live. Um, so I think one of the goals um, is for that entryway to better represent, you know, who we are as a city. Um, the other issue is that stretch of road without a raised median there um, is one of the most accident prone stretches of road in mm -hmm. Beaufort County. Um, so there's a safety issue that by adding the raised medians will, will help us with. Um, and the other issue is undergrounding the utilities. So all of those power lines, and mm -hmm. I encourage your viewers that when you're, you're leaving the intersection of 21 headed into town, Take you know, note. look at all of the utility yes. lines and then envision once those are all gone away, uh, we have better landscaping and, and better plannings through there, right. um, how transformative that will be through that corridor. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think that um, 
I get that from people who come visit. I'm a transplant myself, uh -huh. like, like many people are in Buford. Um, and, and they don't think, um, they're surprised when they finally make that turn and they come down right. to Bay Street that how beautiful Buford on the Bay really is because that entryway um, or entree into, into Buford or Northern Buford County is not as aesthetically pleasing as it, as it could be. So um, that'll be a big change, obviously a big project. So um, it will, but I will say it's like any renovation project. So anybody who's renovated a room in their house or renovated their house, <laughs> there will be headaches. Right. I live in Pigeon Point. My, my businesses are out in the Buford Industrial Village. Um, so I'm going to dri drive that corridor, you know, multiple times a day. Um, it, there, there, you know, there obviously will be some challenges uh, with any redevelopment project of that size on one of our main corridors. Um, but like most renovation projects, after we get finished with it, I hope that we look back and say, you know, why didn't we do this sooner? sooner. Um, and that it's an absolute benefit for the community. So we ask the community members to be patient. Um, and Absolutely. that the end result hopefully will meet or exceed their expectations. Um, you know, we don't necessarily get as many updates or people maybe don't pay attention right. as much as they should for what what's going on. But tell us about the city's new Facebook page. So is that a good place, a spot um, to be connected and um, get up to date information? That is a great spot. And uh, you know, one of my platform pieces in my campaign was that the city do a, a better job of engaging its constituents, engaging city residents, and not only city residents, but the other folks who live around uh, in the unincorporated Beaufort in Port Royal who use the city daily for services. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody reads the newspaper, not everybody watches local news, uh, more folks are turning to social media of, of all age groups. Yes. Um, I have some friends who are grandparents and they're on Facebook because they want to keep up with the grandkids. Hey, my um, parents are, are in that in that group. So. so so in an effort for better transparency and to let folks know what's going on with the city, um, the city has uh, created a new Facebook page. If you go on Facebook and search City Beaufort SC, um, the page will come up. It's a great way to find out what agenda items and meetings are going on, uh, openings for board and, and commissions, and then these development projects and how folks will be affected. It's a great way to find out what's going on there. Well, great. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate yeah. it. I want to thank our viewers for watching North of the Broad and hope you come back and watch our next segment. Thanks so much.